Hello. Today, I want to do a little talk about the Solomon Islands. I compiled, I compiled recent media reportings of the whole event and so on. And I also want to start off in what could be deemed a very weird location, but go with it. The issue, and I'll start with the I, the concept of. So I start with the concept. No, I'm sorry, wrong wording. The incident of the nineteen sixty five. Indonesian massacre of anti-communists done by the military. This does matter because it shows a precedent. I will explain what I mean. I'll go for all these effing here individually, don't you worry. 50 years ago, okay, I will scroll through this as well. So I'll read, uh, read relevant stuff, but I'll show everything. Absolutely. This is Cold War stuff, of course. So, of course, it's going to be different from, of course, other stuff. And here we go. <laughs> Documents from the National Archives of Australia show that Australian, that the Australian Embassy and the Department of External Affairs were closely aligned to the Indonesian Army, offered support for the activities in offering Sukarno and, and, and eliminating the KPI and used Radio Australia to broadcast army propaganda in, in, in Indonesia that contributed to anti-communist hysteria. Cables shown that show that the Australian embassy was aware of the, that the, that communists were being rounded up and killed from early October 1965. The Australian ambassador to Indonesia personally witnessed around 250 prisoners being taken away by the army and noted that it was impossible to know the number of being killed and detained, but it cannot be small. Helmi requested Australia and British troops to restrict all patrols activities in Borneo so that so the Indonesian army could deal with the communists. Shan assured Helmi the army was completely safe in using their forces for whatever purposes they saw fit, knowing these forces would be used to attack KPI members and allies. The biggest role Australia played in 1965-1966 massacres of the KPI was the was free broadcasting supporting Indonesian army propaganda in the weeks that followed the coup attempted coup. The Indonesian army seized control of virtually all of Indonesia's media, media and began an aggressive and persuasive anti-KPI campaign, spread, which spread disinformation and aimed at discrediting and the and dehumanizing the communists. During the time of the killings, radio. Radio Australia was under the influence of the Department of External Affairs, which was passed, which was which was passed information from the Australian Embassy in Jakarta. I'll show you the rest. You can read the rest. Both this, and I'll put link in the description. Next one. The US is what. Some of the MS in the US government has been trying to undermine or overthrow Sukato, Indonesia's anti colonial independence leader and the first president, president far before 1965. In 1958, CIA backed armed 
where rebellions against the central government only called off operations after American pilot was captured. While conducting bombing operations that killed Indonesian soldiers and civilians, agents reported went too far to and produced a, pornogra- a pornograph film showing a man wearing a cigar mask, which they hoped would employ to discredit him. It was never used. Is it, is it, it has not been known that the U.S. states provided the kind of extra support in nineteen nineties. And a, a U.S. A U.S. embassy staff member admitted he has overlooked the communists, the Indonesian military, as the terror was underway. It was really big help to the army. John J. Matters, Martyrs, a former member of the embassy political section, published in Post. They probably killed a lot of people. I probably have a lot of blood on my hands, but that's not all bad. Why does this matter then? Because <laughs> fundamentally, it was on the like the twenty. Let me guess. Here we go. The twenty, the twenty ninth of March, around by that time, this was said by the Solomon Islands. We find it entirely Mr. Speaker that to be to be branded as unfit to manage our sovereign affairs or have our motives in pursuing our national interests. Australian media is on about Solomon Islands being pressured by the People's Republic of China to build a military base in Solomon Islands, which is only two two thousand kilometers away from the northern shores of Australia. That's Australian media, Mr. Speaker. Where does the nonsense come from? The security treaty, Mr. Speaker, is pursued at the, at the request of the Solomon Islands government. We are not pressured. We are not pressured in any way by our new friend. There is no intention whatsoever, Mr. Speaker, to ask China to build a military base on the Solomon Islands. Goodness. We have no intention, Ms. Ms. Mr. Speaker, of pitching into any geopolitical power struggle to just that Mr. Speaker, to say that Mr. Speaker is simply ludicrous. As, as a part, as a sovereign country, Mr. Speaker, we will continue to collaborate and ensure what some of the islands needs is in its, secu- is in its security space are addressed collectively. So I make it abundantly clear that, that the Solomon Islands security arrangement to Australia remains in place intact but in moving forward to achieve our security need it is clear that we will need to diversify our country's relationship with other parties and what is wrong with that that is what was said by the leader I'll now go back to the articles. <clears throat> Article one. From the 31st of March, 2022, from CGTN. China, Solomon Islands signed deal on security cooperation pr- framework. China's on islands have, have signed a security deal, a cooperation and framework. The Chinese embassy in the China Solomon Islands announced on Thursday, the security cooperation between the two countries is not directed at any third party and can, and can complement regional structures and, with, and other countries, the embassy said in a statement. Quote H. Relevant parties are urged to respect the sovereignty and independence of China and the Solomon Islands in their bilateral security arrangement to stop the irrational smears and spreading of misfission. The statement reads the statement.
The Big Island, the Pacific Islands are our last staging ground for international cooperation. Neither the backyard of any country nor the arena for any great games," said Wang. Wang of the Chinese Foreign Ministry. The agreement will further strengthen the bilateral cooperation between China and some islands in areas such as disaster response, humanitarian aid, development assistance, and maintain and maintain social order to jointly address traditional and non-traditional security challenges, according to China's embassy. Next one. 21st of September 19, 2019. This is a context of all of this in which some linked to. China and, and Solomon Islands established different relations. China and the Solomon Islands signed a communique in Beijing on Saturday, establishing a diplomatic relation. The communique was signed by the Chinese state councillor and state for, and foreign minister and Solomon Islands Minister of Foreign Affairs and External Trade. It stated, it stated that the two countries who decided to, to recognize each other and establish diplomatic relations at the ambassadorial level affects the effective of the date of signature of this communique is in keeping with the interests and desires of two people. We look forward to the quick development of the bilateral relations between China and some islands, Solomons. The government of the Solomon Islands recognizes that there's only there's but one China in the world. That is that is the government of people people's Republic of China, the sole legal government representing representing the whole of China, and that of, and that Taiwan is an inalienable part of China's territory, according to the Communique. The government of the Solomon Islands shall shall sever different relations with Taiwan as of this day and undertake undertake that it no longer develop any official relations or official exchanges with Taiwan. The governments of the People's Republic of China appreciates the position of the government of Solomon Islands, the communique says. More context and context here. Just of just people cutting ties with Taiwan. That's I'm sure you all know that. Wang pledged China shall not impose its own will on the Solomon Islands or seek unilateral interests in bilateral cooperation. Cooperation between China and the Solomon Islands will be, will be fair, open, mutual, beneficial, and inclusive. There are only a handful of countries who have not yet, not, not yet to, to established diplomatic relations with China. We are, we believe. More and more visionary people in these countries will speak up for justice in keeping with the overriding trends of the time, Wang noted. It said also that the Solomon Islands consists of over nine of over 900 islands as a sovereign state in Oceania with a population of 600,000. Next one. 19th of April, 2022, so only two days ago. Is the Solomon Islands the next victim of US power shocking? The White House announced on 8, April 18th that the White House Indo-Pacific coordinator, Kurt Campbell, and the, and the Assistant Secretary of State for East Asian and Pacific Affairs are heading to the Solomon Islands this week. The State Department spokesman, spokesperson Ned Prince confirmed that China would be on the agenda. The recent deal of on security cooperation framework between China and Solomon Islands, according to Price, could increase the destabilization within the Solomon Islands and will, set a, and will set a concerning precedent of the wider Pacific region. And that's why I mentioned the Indonesian stuff at the beginning, because if you remember that stuff, it's pretty clear that the US ignored, ignored and they supported the military in creating massacres.
At best, US's warming towards Samaritans could be described as utilitarian. At worst, it is simply preparing another chess piece piece of pawn in its grand strategy to contain China. The visit by the two high level officials is, is said to come at with a range of ways to offer assistance to the region to, to change Solomon Islands Prime Minister Minister's mind on the security deal according to Axios's report. Even after the DPM made it clear someone Solomon Islands isn't allowing China to build a military base and declared any suggestion that his country cannot manage sovereignty affairs very insulting. The, the, the security deal kicked US's Cold War routine, routine into full gear. This, this one single deal, which PM described as diversifying the country's security partnership, is seen by, by US politicians as tantamount to some islands turning to the enemy's side. And America's strategic said is simple to stop China from growing more influence, nurture US. Um, yeah, basically, as yes, you can see, the rest itself. Since it's got a lot more articles to go through. There's then this article from 16th of September 2019. Solomon cuts ties, different ties with Taiwan. Again, this is a rehash of the other thing, of course but it's actually relevant. Again, just to give some example, because it gives some actually this. According to the Facebook post, the governor, government of Salman believes the ambassador has been interfering with its foreign, its internal affairs. Um, when answering questions about some islands likely breaking different different regions of Taiwan, Ma, Xiangxing, spokesman of the Chinese State Council Taiwan office, noted on Wednesday that the one China principle is a norm of international relations and universal consensus in the national community. Solomon Islands is a stiff country Taiwan loses as a diplomatic ally since Taiwan leader Tsai Ing Wen took office in 2016. Following Burkina Faso, the Dominican Republic, Sao, Sao Tome, and Prince Panama, and El Salvador. That is, I think, part one I might do. Because to go into the other ones will take a little bit more time, I think. But don't worry, there will be a part two.